This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. So question five is all about creating ranges and using them to compute some formulas. So a vector t is to be created that ranges from one to ten in steps of one. So we can do that using the colon operator. We start at one, we go in steps of one, and we go up to ten. We're also asked to create a variable theta that ranges from 0 to pi and contains 32 elements. So the simplest way of doing this one is to use the linspace function. Our range starts at 0 and goes up to pi and contains 32 elements. And now that we've defined vectors t and theta, we're to use them to compute the following. x equals 2 times sine theta y equals t minus 1 divided by t plus 1. Now, if I was to hit enter here, I would get an error because I'm trying to do a matrix division. And that's not what I want to do. I just want to do an element by element division of t. So I need to precede my divide sign with the dot operator. And lastly, z equals sine theta squared divided by theta squared. I need to use the dot before the exponentiation sign to denote an element by element operation. And I also need to use a dot before my division sign. In question 6, we're asked to compute the discharge factor for flow through an open channel of parabolic cross-section. And we're told that x is our variable, which is the ratio of maximum water depth to breadth of the channel at the top of the water. And we're told that x should be in the range 0.45 to 0.9 in steps of 0.05. So we'll define that first. And we'll use the colon operator to do that. And we need to define x first because it's about to be used in our formula for the discharge factor. So MATLAB needs to know what x is before it uses it for the first time. We're also going to use the semicolon operator on the end of the line. And all that does is it stops the elements of x printing to the command window. You'll see that x is still defined in the workspace but it's not printed to the command window. So now we can go ahead and define the discharge factor. Now you'll see that I've got an error here, and that's just telling me that I've missed out a dot operator somewhere in this expression. So I'll use the up arrow key to get my expression back. And just looking along it, I see that I need a dot operator here, because I'm multiplying two vectors together, and I need to do that on an element-my-element element basis. And I also need a dot in front of the to the power sign, because again, we're exponentiating two vectors. And now a row of discharge factors is returned. So question seven is all about points on a circle. And we're asked to create a column vector for theta with several different values in it. So we'll do that first. We're told that our radius is 2, and then we're asked to compute x and y. So x is r times cos theta, and y is r times sine theta. And now that we've computed that, we want to check to see that x and y indeed satisfy the equation of a circle. So we'll define a new variable so that we don't overwrite our existing variable r. We'll use capital R and we'll define that as the square root of x 
dot squared plus y dot squared. And we expect that capital R should return 2, the same as our original radius, which it does. So question 8 is all about a geometric series. And we're told that the sum of a geometric series 1 plus r plus r squared, etc., approaches a limit of 1 over 1 minus r squared. And we're told to calculate the limit and compare it with our summations. So we'll define r to be 0 0.5. And we'll define our limit as 1 over 1 minus r. And we'll let that print so we can see it. And now we'll calculate our first series, which is from 0 to 10. So n is going to range in from 0 in steps of 1 to 10. And our first sum is going to be r raised to the power of n. And you can see that that returns all the elements in our series from 0 to 10. Now we want to sum all of those up and compare them with our theoretical limit of 2. And we can use the MATLAB built-in function sum to sum all those elements. So we'll simply do sum brackets and the vector we want to sum, which is sum 1. And we can see the result is 1.9990 which is obviously very close to our theoretical limit of 2. Now we can try that with the series 0 to 50 and 0 to 100 and see how close they get to the theoretical limit. So we'll use the up arrow to go back and redefine n as 0 to 50. We'll then define sum 2. And you can see already with 50 terms that we're already equal to our theoretical limit. Now what we can do is, you'll notice that MATLAB is only displaying four digits to the right of the decimal point. If we use the format long command, that forces MATLAB to display all the precision present. So if we compute that sum again, you can now see that in actual fact, that's not quite equal to 2. So let's try computing the series with 100 terms. This will be sum 3. And now you can see, even with format long, that we've reached the theoretical limit of 2. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.